hey welcome today and if I was to give this any title it would be the pedestal and the platform belong to the Lord and as I delivered the message that was burning in my heart to you all the other day no sooner had that come out of my mouth and I'd stop record then the Lord just continued to pour into me and I just want to build on the foundation that was laid the other day and what the Lord showed me and I'm like God why did you show me this when I pressed the stop button but look let's just go large with God today let's go live with the presence of the Holy Spirit today and lean into everything that the Lord wants to say and I'm just giving this whole time with you with the Lord back to Jesus and I know that God is even going to show up and surprise me as he just begins to speak his truths and his wonders as I'm a vessel for the Lord to flow through today so hey are you ready shall we just pray Father, I just thank you, Lord, that your download from heaven is like manna. It's fresh and it's new to us every day. So we say, Lord, right now, speak naturally, supernaturally through me and have your precious way. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon lives today and prepare your bride, your church in purity in every way in Jesus name. And yeah, so if I was to give this the title, it would be the pedestal and the platform belong to the Lord. And there's three things that the Lord showed me just um, the other day that he wants to take off the pedestals. We have set them up on pedestals. They are destructive to our lives. There is an enemy out there who roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, I want to bring you the truth of God's word today. That roaming, roaring lion that is the enemy, he masquerades himself like a lion, but he is not the actual lion. His teeth were knocked out at the cross. He no longer has any bite, but he can roar and he can make a lot of noise. And the truth of the matter is our ruling, reigning Lion of Judah, our King Jesus is the one who has destroyed all of the works of the devil's authority so that you and I can receive his truth today and we can go free. But there are three things that we can put on a pedestal. There's probably more than that, but three things that I sense the Lord wants me to bring to you today that can really set us free, will purify our hearts in every way and um, will just cause us to be in these days all that the Lord would have us to be. One is God wants us to take people off the pedestal. And I want to give you the, the scriptures. The Lord brought these to my heart. And it says in Proverbs 29, verse 25, I touched on this the other day, but I want to give you the, the first reference because sometimes, and as happened the other day, I just went live with it. And yeah, everything else came together after, after the message. Uh, but it says in Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man is a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. We know that God doesn't want us falling into that pit but he is taking us as children, as his royalty, as his sons and daughters, princes and princesses, because he is our king. <laughs> our father is the king of kings. He wants to take us today from the pit to the palace. That is where he wants his children ruling and reigning over every problem, over every circumstance, ruling and reigning. Whatever we permit is permitted in this world. Whatever we do not permit is not permitted in this world so that's number one and being very clear as well that when we set people on that pedestal it's so unfair because it just gives them a place to fall from the only one who is on the throne and who should be set on the pedestal is our lord and savior jesus christ and in fact it says in deuteronomy 5 verse 8 you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea you must not bow down to them or worship them we are not meant to be giving fame and acclaim to men and women at all we are meant to be Yes, there is honour for all. That's what God wants from his church and from his children. But we have taken, I believe, this honour thing way too far. And it's caused us to set people up on the pedestal and to set people up in a position that they were never actually called to. The only one who deserves that position <laughs> to be lifted up, to be lifted high in our lives is our Lord and Saviour. Jesus Christ and God said to us he gave us this command it's one of the 10 commandments for goodness sake 
And we must take this and receive this as his church right now so that we will not bow to any man or to anything else other than to him. You must not bow down to, to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection uh, for any other gods. God is jealous for our hearts and for our love and for our affection. So let's make sure that we are not setting anything whether it be cars, position, careers, whether it be any other loves in this life above the love of our life, which is to be our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will be added, multiplied to you in Jesus' name. And when we seek first the king, and his kingdom. When we seek first his righteousness, righteousness is a person, it is our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and our righteousness is only to be found in him as we are totally dependent on Jesus, then we will be living condemnation free, guilt free and we will be living as his royalty and as God intends us to live in these days. How cool is that, hey? And it also um, says in Deuteronomy 4 verse 25, in the future, do not corrupt yourselves by making idols of any kind. So let's not set anything else or anyone else on the pedestal, but let's only set up high, lift up high, lift up Jesus. And the Bible says that everything, all men and women will be drawn to Jesus in our lives. So um, the other thing I want to say as well is when people do fall from that pedestal, people maybe that we have set up, let's not be there pointing the, the, the finger, but let's be there praying and encouraging and wanting to see people uh, set back right where God wants them to be because he is a good and he is a faithful father who loves his own. I really sense the Lord speak to me that we are not to ever um, push anybody down and to leave anybody, don't leave your own down and never kick them on the ground. That's what the Lord spoke to my heart. So let's pray for people in these days that there won't be any who would fall away, but God would bring everyone to that place of restoration as he longs to. He is a loving, forgiving, merciful God. Uh, we are so quick to judge when we are only called to love. There is one judge, his name, is God Almighty, it's our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and may we never assume that place of judge. We are called to love one another and to always want the best for one another. So yes, never um, leave any of our own down on the ground. If my little boy fell over, I would never leave him there and that's the father's heart I would, and the mother's heart. I would run to him and I would scoop him up in my arms and I would wash him down if he grazed or if he hurt himself. If he was dirty and mucky, I would in love clean him up. I always remember my little Judah when he was about 18 months old. He was going around walking through the kitchen. He'd come um, and there was like the, uh, all the people around him and friends, we had a house full, were laughing at him with his little uh, little panties and his little PJs down round his ankles and there was some uh, some mess hanging from him and around his legs that was not very pleasant and people were screaming ah yuck what did the mum do the parent ran to him and as he tried to carry on and he wanted to help me sorry mummy he wanted he may have been a bit older than 18 months I don't recall exactly but he wanted to help me and as I'm there trying to clean him up and I'll never forget saying no Judah darling and just stay still, mummy will clean you up. Often the people around are quick to condemn when we make a mess. They're quick to laugh, they're quick to mock, they're quick to pull down. But let me tell you, the father's heart is coming to clean up, will always be there to restore, to clean that mess and to to restore is to give back better than before. So yeah, let's not set people up on a pedestal um, and give them a place to fall from and to fail from. But let's pray for each other and encourage each other in these days in every way. So yeah, that's uh, the first pedestal. The second pedestal that God wants um, us to, uh, the Lord spoke to me that we can put money on the pedestal. And the Lord says, take money, off the pedestal today. Um, money 
is the currency of this world. The currency of the kingdom of God is faith. He wants us rising in faith and thank God, yes, he will bless and he will prosper us so that we are blessed to be a blessing. God will always be our source and our provision, but let's not make anything in this world our source and raise it up as an idol put it on a pedestal because in these times let me tell you and I will prophesy this right now economies we are going to see them fail in the world system but our God our great God and the great economy and the currency of our kingdom which is faith he can send manna to feed his children in the wilderness that your God I have never seen uh, the the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread your God will provide and he will resource you and he will supply your every need as you trust him and as we money is a great vehicle uh, for us but it is by no means the it's just to be it's a, a means to in this world to an end it's uh, of no actual eternal worth and God is our source and our resource so take money off the pedestal don't strive and struggle <laughs> for money um, money will always follow the one who is pursuing. Resource will always follow the one pursuing the presence of God because he is, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the Bible says, he owns heaven and earth. So yeah, let's um, give worth to where it really deserves to be and keep Jesus, our King Jesus on that pedestal. Take money off, take economy, take your um, struggling and striving and worries off that pedestal today in Jesus name. Thirdly, whoa, are you ready for this? Take self off the pedestal. In the Bible we read, I am crucified, Paul said, with Christ and yet I live. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the life of faith. That is the life that dies to self and its own ways and then rises up in God's ways. So I just sense that the Lord uh, wants me to be vulnerable with you. I've shared before that around seven years ago now, the Lord spoke to me in a time of prayer and intimacy with him. And uh, I'd been speaking all over Ghana, different places, women's conferences, and the Lord arrested my heart and in church and pastoring and all that goes with that and whilst we were in lossy mouth actually with my husband's work at the time the Lord said to me will you choose the platform or will you choose the secret place of prayer my presence and my power and as I wrestled in prayer and, and, and with the Lord at that time it was an easy choice to make and I said Lord I lay down every platform and because as I've shared with you the other day, and I want to set this strongly today in every heart, God has not called the children of God or the church to a platform. The world raises up platforms, but by the word of God, we are shown that as the church of Jesus Christ, every minister, every priest is to pour out their lives, not on a platform to build up self. We are to be crucified with Christ and then truly live the God life and see God's works and miraculous wonders released through us. But we are to pour out our lives upon an altar to him first and then to the people. And as I came to that place of surrender, literally the Lord did for that time, strip that platform beneath and that was absolutely fine. And I remember saying to the Lord one time, Lord, if I don't look, speak and act in a certain way, they'll reject me. They did. <laughs> Um, I haven't called you, the Lord said to me, to be cool. I've called you to be fire on the earth. And that's what I sense the Lord just wants to echo to many hearts today. In Deuteronomy 4.24, it says, The Lord your God is a devouring fire. He is a jealous God. He is jealous for you. He will not share his glory with another. A platform is where men want to exude their own glory. An altar is when your, your self-life will die and all you want to do <laughs> is to show forth the praise and the glory and the miraculous wonders of God. And that only happens from an altar. My friend, are you willing to come to the altar 
today and to lay all before him. That's the, the place God is calling his church to. And when I say he's calling his church back to the altar, actually he's calling us forward. <laughs> That's the way into the eternal works and wonders of God from the altar of God as he's bringing us into this new day. This is a new day, I declare it prophetically, and as he brings us in to all that he has for us. Anything that is of a platform nature is corrupt at the root. The Lord wants us to come out of that. That's the world system and to be separate as his church so that we won't suffer any of the curses that will come out of that because stardom, God wants to take stardom out of the church. There is one star. His, he is the day star. He is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We must, as John the Baptist said, decrease and he must increase in Jesus name. So yeah, I just really felt to share that in honesty, in humility and in vulnerability today. And as the Lord has been speaking to our hearts, prepare yourself today to purify your hearts today for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. God is purifying his church. He is preparing us and he is getting us ready. Let's not bow to man, but let's bow only to our Jesus. So shall we do that right now? Shall we bow and shall we pray? And shall we ask the Lord to be the one to purify our hearts? And as we are on that altar, to pour out his works and wonders through our lives, that his life will be manifested through us. Father, we come to you afresh today and surrender. Lord, I thank you for the place you are taking your church, your children right now. And Lord Jesus, we want to follow you, Lord. As we follow you, Jesus, I thank you that many, as you are lifted up in our lives, multitudes will be drawn to and will follow you too. Lord, I just pray, Father, today that you will come Holy Spirit, fill us to overflowing. Lord, let us live in the overflow every day, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.